So, we are talking about awareness, awareness, awareness. Awareness is not something that you do actually. <laughs> In fact, the less you do, the more aware you become within yourself. The less your activity becomes inside, what you call as me, the less that becomes, the more your awareness becomes. The less your personality becomes, the more your presence becomes always. Personality means you have to do a lot to keep it up, isn't it? Yes. Most of the activity that you're doing to keep up your person is unconscious, but you're doing enormous activity to maintain a certain personality, isn't it? If that activity gets lowered, suddenly awareness gets heightened because awareness is not something that you do. The very life is awareness, isn't it? The very basis of life is awareness. You know that you're alive only because you're aware, isn't it? If all awareness disappears, at least on this level we can call it death. So, spirituality is not something that you do. If you stop doing all your nonsense, you're spiritual. <laughs> no? Unnecessary nonsense if you stop, spirituality is, you know. It's not something that you have to do and make it happen or create it, it's not so. But still, why? If that is so, why am I doing my pranayam in the morning? Oh! <laughs> Even in a resort they made us do it. <laughs> I'm sorry, the resort. <laughs> That's because uh, there is no breaks in your activity. What you do within yourself, you have no breaks on it. So, we are creating a certain physical, mental and energy situation where everything gets diverted from your activity. Slowly, the practice establishes a situation where the life energies raise to a certain pitch and intensity that uh, slowly the activity becomes insignificant. It's still there. It's still happening. You've seen this in Shunya meditation, you just said. Activity is still happening, but it's insignificant. The same activity which was so significant has become insignificant. We have not stopped it. We have not done anything to hold it down but somehow it has become not so important. You see this happening? When you just sit and meditate in Shunya, everything is happening, but it's no more important. It's lost its significance. It's lost its impact upon you. It's lost its influence upon you. It doesn't mould you anymore. All the activity of the mind stops moulding you. You are no more being moulded by that activity. This <clears throat> this whole distortion that we have done to life in the form of creating our person. See, when you create your personality, because it's created mostly unconsciously, just a small part of it may be conscious, the rest of it is all unconscious, isn't it? When you create your, un your personality, somewhere, in one way, it means somewhere you thought creator has not done a good enough job on you, <laughs> isn't it? If it needs improvement, definitely he did not do a good enough job on you, isn't it so? <laughs> so why would you feel that such a grand creation is not good enough? Something that's so enormous and fantastic is not good enough, why? Because in this simple process of self-preservation, you know, there is a simple basic process which is built into every cell in our body, every worm, insect, animal has this, we also have it. This simple process of self-preservation, 
we don't know where to contain it. It has just spread itself into everything. Because it spread itself into everything, you have to create a small person of yourself who will defend himself all the time. As we have been looking at in the programs, the only thing that needs preservation is your physical body. Your personality, we must maul it every day. It should be okay, isn't it? If every day if you can make mincemeat out of your personality, you could create another one tomorrow morning, isn't it? Isn't it so? We've been trying to do that gently because if I go very hard at it, you'll run away. <laughs> gently, step by step, we're trying to make mincemeat out of your personality so that it becomes a flexible aspect. You cannot live without a personality. You need one to exist here, to go about in the world, do your work, manage things. But if it's a flexible thing, that in different places as it is necessary for the situation you can put on the right kind of personality, then it would be fine. But right now, it is like a rock, it sits on you all the time. Anything that doesn't fit into its ambit, it makes you suffer, isn't it? Who drew this caricature that you call as myself? Definitely yourself, but uh, influenced by so many people around you. You know, you're fifteen, sixteen, you go and watch a Amitabh Bachchan movie, you come home and try to walk like him unconsciously. <laughs> yes, isn't it? <laughs> Sometimes maybe consciously, but most of the time unconsciously, isn't it? <laughs> so, this caricature, came into existence because of all kinds of bits and pieces that are gathered. It happened <laughs> when we were in school. There was a boy who was studying with me who had an excellent hand, you know, he could just sketch anybody with whatever kind of distortion he wanted. So, there was one very hated geography teacher. <laughs> and uh, when he entered the class, this boy had a horrible caricature of him ready on the blackboard. Badly distorted, but everybody can clearly recognize who it is. with all kinds of very bad distortions on him. <laughs> then he walked in and uh, as usual he walks into the class always with a temper. Whether he is talking about the grasslands in America or he talks about the deserts in Africa, he is always in bad temper. <laughs> he, the moment he saw, he just uh, one thing he was angry, another thing he was somehow hit by the whole thing, the distortions. <laughs> then he asked, who is uh, responsible for this uh, terrible atrocity? As usual, you know, everybody is suddenly interested in geography, very studious and <laughs> Then he repeated again, who is responsible for this atrocity? He thinks it's an atrocity. We thought it was an appropriate <laughs> thing. Then uh, somebody made up their mind and stood up and said, uh, we really don't know, uh, but uh, it should be his parents. <laughs> So, 
for this atrocity that you call as myself, it's not your parents. <laughs> this is you. <laughs> Only you can commit this atrocity of distorting yourself into such a tiny possibility when an unbounded possibility was what you were offered. <laughs> With life you were offered an unbounded possibility. You made a, such a bad distortion and made yourself into such a tiny possibility. If you stop creating this caricature, because this caricature cannot exist one day without your support, you need to support it all the time. What meditation means, means in one way you are just withdrawing the support for your personality, that's all. Suddenly it collapses, only the presence is there, the person is no more there. If you could walk on the street like this, if you could operate with people like this all the time, that you have no personality, but looking at this person, at this moment how she is, accordingly you put up a personality, as it is necessary for this person. Now you go to that person, you put up a personality that is necessary for that person, then it would be so much fun drawing new, new caricatures every day. But once you get stuck to a particular distortion, <laughs> that becomes a problem. Every day if you have a new distortion, it's called art. <laughs> if you are stuck with one distortion, then it's called… you are called a freak. Isn't it? <laughs> isn't it so? Every day if you are able to create a new distortion, that is artwork, isn't it? If you are stuck with one distortion, you are a cripple. <laughs> so that's the big difference.